333 then Justin Marshall joins us Justin round two of Super Rugby Pacific let's start there with Adi Savir what happens now in front of the judiciary mate your thoughts oh look I, I certainly feel that uh, nothing um, further is sort of uh, suffered from from Adi Savir from like you said, just a, a spur of the moment thing where um, you know he's in the heat of battle and you know he's made a, he's made a gesture. It's inappropriate. You know, no one knows what was said to him or he knows knows the context of you know what what uh, was the build up to that. Um, you know, we, we all do that. These things happen, and uh, he's not that type of player. So I feel that they just say, hey, look, mate, you, you can't uh, you can't go around doing that. Um, we understand um, that it's out of character and uh, we just move on. I hope that happens. And in terms of the All Black captaincy and everything else, is it something we need to think about, talk about? Is it a worry at all that he that he has had a couple of brain explosions on the field or, again, is just something that we just park and press pause? Well, look, he's right in what he says. You know, you've got to keep the game, um, you know, uh, uh, able to be watched by everyone and, and make sure that... You know, kids who are tuning in, um, that they're aware that, you know, certain things are appropriate and some some things are inappropriate. But, again, it's a physical contact sport. Um, at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to have games turn into a, a complete big scrap. But sometimes when you get bodies colliding like they do, those things happen. Uh, and and, and that's, that's just par for the course. Like, Hardy plays the game tough, mate. He plays, he plays his heart out every week. And... Yeah, he was upset and annoyed, and we've all been there. Look, geez, I tell you, I don't know if you remember, Marty, but I played in a test match, oh, well, not a test match, a super rugby game where Mertz went running around and giving the whole crowd the bird and yep, they made t-shirts yep, out of it. And, yep. um, you know, oh, yeah, it wasn't ideal and it's not politically correct, but times have changed now, haven't they? And I, I feel that sometimes we're just getting a little too oversensitive about uh, things that are, are just, you know, meant... meant, meant to uh, sort of just be put put to bed and and we all move on. You know, the fact that this has kicked up a massive big storm, I think, is t- it's just gone too far. Okay, and so just finally on it. So when you were playing, you, you've you know had moments as as well. When you erupt like that and it happens on the field, how how long do you dwell on it afterwards? What I'm trying to say, will you know, will 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 he be thinking about this for days, or is it a very quick thing you move on from? Well, because of what's happened, he'll be thinking to himself, I wish this hasn't, uh, hadn't transpired the way that it did. And, and that's just natural to think that way. Um, and, and now, obviously, that the judicial's involved, it means that there are going to be further, uh, I guess, investigations into it, which, which again, is not ideal. But, um, you know, if, whether this is the way that the game is, is at the moment, I, I hope that the right people are making the right decisions and um, it, just, it just moves on as quick as it came up because... Uh, I feel that this has already got too too much attention for a, a, just a brief little thing that happened very quickly. The Blues losing, Justin Marshall with us, All Black Legend, 81 tests for our country. The Blues losing, mate, to me, was the best thing that's happened in the first two rounds because all of a sudden it brings at least one Australian team into the equation. If that hadn't happened, Justin, it just would have been, well, we can predict all of these results before, the, before we even go and get on the grass. Yeah, well, interestingly, uh, when you ask a lot of the players uh, and, and they talk about teams that they feel uh, would be in the mix come, you know, business end of the season, the Brumbies was always going to be one of those sides. It's just a matter of whether or not they could get their heads around with the talent that they've got in their team, uh, the, 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 to get their heads around that, you know, the New Zealand sides are not as invincible as what you think and uh, go out there and perform to that potential. And you certainly saw that at the weekend. Um, is it good for the competition? Uh, if you're a Blues fan, you, they'll all be saying no. Um, but equally, all the Blues fans, when they saw the Crusaders get tipped up in round one, would have been saying, this is good for the comp. Yep. Of course it is. It, 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 creates, it creates competitiveness. It gives uh, everybody else hope. You know, the fact that the Crusaders... Uh, we're invincible again and, and, and uh, not able to be beaten, particularly at home. People will go, well, God, we know what the final's going to be yeah, and we probably yeah. know what the result of the final's going to be. So, no, absolutely, I do think it's good for the competition, Marty, that that result happened at the weekend. And uh, it goes to show you, you can't sit back and uh, have an off day because if you do, you'll get hurt. 
Perhaps the only Australian team that is capable of doing this, I mean, we'll find obviously that out during the season, but a lot of the other results were kind of topsy-turvy. Look, I don't want to pick on Rico Ioane, but the questions have always been asked about him at centre and is he better at a winger. Butchering that try was something that I thought watching him yesterday, dude, you've played too much rugby in the in the centre of the of the back line, in the midfield, to make these most basic errors. We see it with the All Blacks as well. What needs to be what needs to happen to his game to get some peripheral vision and be aware that Justin, he must know every time he runs, there's gonna be somebody left or right of him coming behind him. Surely he must know that. Yeah, you've got to be aware of the space around you, absolutely. And and that's that's the role of, of your twelve and your thirteen is to make sure that you are utilizing what is outside you and inside you because you're you're one of your key roles as a as a distributor. And so you know, if you can fix players um, and, and then, you know, make line breaks and then set up uh, your wingers and your fullbacks, then, then, then you're fulfilling your role. So, look, I, I certainly don't feel that um, it's, uh, it's meaning that he's unable to perform that role at, at the top level. Um, I think he's shown that he is capable of doing that. Um, I still feel that there is ground to be made up and he, he still needs to keep learning about certain specifics of the position. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, uh, one bad decision or two doesn't mean that that jersey's not right for him. And uh, he, he will learn more than anybody else that uh, he needs to make better decisions when he gets opportunities like the one at the weekend. I've got to praise the big source, mate. How was that run from Tom Robinson? He eh? put a step on, put a step on a fullback, <laughs> mate, and outpaced him on the side. I loved it. I know, isn't it great to see, you know, the, 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 the golden locks flowing and, yep. um, you know, Lucy's playing the way that they, the way that they should. You know, he, he just plays uh, what, with whatever jersey he's got on, doesn't seem to matter. He just plays the way that he knows best. And, um, yeah, you're absolutely right there. Uh, it does make you feel good to, uh, when you see uh, a forward uh, running and performing like that, it does make you good feel like you're happy to be retired, Marty, because, man, these, <laughs> these guys can run, step, run, step, kick, and do do things, um, you yeah, know, like It was just a great now, skill uh, set, wasn't it? Because, okay. Justin, you could see him. He saw the gap yeah. there. I mean, how many other players would have actually gone into that fullback and made that tackle? But he backed himself to actually put a leg on, mate. I just thought it was, it was just brilliant to watch. All right, I'm just going through these scores. 50 points the Highlanders put, the Crusaders put on the Highlanders. Um, 46, the uh, Waratahs on the Ndrua. 52, the Chiefs on Wana Pacifica. Reds put 70 on the force. I mean, that's that to me is a real worry. You don't want to get into the comp already and go, OK, four teams are already out of it, but it already appears that way. Yeah, it does. You know, there, there are teams that are struggling at the moment and, and uh, quite a few of those teams are the teams that don't have the squad depth of others. Uh, but... I certainly feel that the new law innovations um, have also been conducive to getting higher scores. Uh, the ball is in play so much more. There, there is no, I, I guess, leniency anymore from the officials to have players milking the clock and basically taking rest periods uh, when, when they're, they're not supposed to. Um, the fact that the set pieces have been um, heavily monitored, even goal kicking, it just means that fatigue comes into the game more and, and when fatigue comes into the game people make errors uh, and, and, and that's because they're tired uh, and I think that's why we're seeing quite a, an influx in, in points being scored and, and teams that don't have good benches um, seem to be struggling more than others because the benches are not adding the impact and players are more fatigued than they've ever been and coaches can see they're tired and are having to bring them off and a lot of them are the key personnel as well Justin Marshall is with us. On average, 78.8 points scored across the six games. So that's almost a point a minute across all six games. Is that good or bad? Mm. I think it's good. I think it's healthy for the game. You know, the fact that we are now having players fatiguing because the ball is in play more uh, and you're getting rewarded for good continuity, you're getting, you're getting rewarded because the defence isn't always fresh. You know, the, the thing about the game is now it's so heavily analysed that most of these sides, you know, they know what's coming at them from the opposition. They've done their homework, but there's no supplement for that when players are tired because, like I said, they won't make that tackle that they, they would usually make because they are fatigued and they don't get in the right position and they get brushed or they get fended or stepped, whatever it might be. Um, look, it'll pull back because the players will adjust. Uh, and, and everybody will start to learn to use their benches and everything better. So the points will uh, eventually come back a bit. 
But at the moment, you know, it's about the teams and players learning that the game has sped up and the ball is in play more and I've got to get fitter and I've got to make sure that when I'm tired, um, I'm getting myself into good positions. So, yeah, I don't think it's bad for the game. You love this headline, and this is a news hub at the moment. Highlanders hope Aaron Smith's return can snap shocking super rugby start. Since when is a halfback's return to any side ever? Ever. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Look, uh, there's no doubt that uh, world-class players make a difference to any side, and and he will. Uh, and, and it won't just be what he does on the field. It's his competitiveness. That's infectious. Right. So that, that will help lift the mood. But... You know, the, there are much more worrying signs across the board for the Highlanders, you know, to get to, to get 60 put on them at home and then another 50 at the weekend. Uh, I, I actually made the comment, I said, uh, when I was when I was uh, sort of watching that game, that it's not often, Marty, that you'll see me um, flick across to the other channel to watch the Warriors to see a competitive game. Right. So, um, yeah. yeah, I understand. I yeah. think once you saw... Yeah, once you saw 25 points that the Crusaders had on the Islanders, you, you, because they don't have the depth, you knew there wasn't going to be some miraculous comeback and they were going to fight their way back into the game because they, they just don't have the personnel to do that. So, yeah, look, Aaron Smith will make a difference, but there are more worries across the board. You know, they lose key players like Frizzell, um, Umanga Jensen. Like they lost Mick Ali too, obviously. Um, Ethan DeGroote, you know, they, they, these are big name players. They, they don't have the ability to replace them and, and that's going to hurt them I think all season. Finally Justin, and we always appreciate your time, Justin Marshall with us on the platform. Look, I'm, I'm, I applaud the idea of taking the game to different markets and, 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 and trying to sort of attract a different audience and things, but I just kind of feel that this Melbourne drum has just been beaten too, you know, one time too many, mate. I was sitting there watching it thinking, you've got a great game, you know, highlight of the weekend, Blues Brumbies. It's in front of a crowd that would barely be a third in that stadium. You know, they've been trying for years to crack Melbourne. League can't even crack Melbourne. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be better to actually reward your hard-suffering actual fans who love the game of rugby, who didn't have it during COVID and missed out on that? Take it to a town or a city that loves it. Take it to Perth. I don't know whether you could do a whole round in Fiji. How fabulous that would be. Because it's obviously not about just in spectators paying money through the gate. Because otherwise they wouldn't do it and continue to try and plug this Melbourne thing. Because the spectators don't turn up. So it's not about that. They've sold the product already ready. Wouldn't they be better off taking it somewhere else and actually rewarding those that actually love it? You would think so, Marty. Yeah, I have to agree with you. You know, it is a um, a mecca for sport, Melbourne. You know, and uh, they get an absolute deluge of it, don't mm. they? Uh, you know, they, 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 get, they get the Grand Prix, uh, they get the, the oh. Australian Open yep. for tennis. Yep. Um, and then they've got their mainstream, you know, the, the, they've got the storm there. They've got a um, huge AFL. But they just get hammered with it. And then you've got the MCG for cricket. So, yeah, you, you wonder whether or not this is a place that actually really needs to have uh, a super rugby, super round in its city because their, their supporters, are, their, their people are blessed with the ability to choose from week to week what they want to go and watch. And, and they've got so much of it. It's a saturation. So... Yeah, I certainly feel that going to a, a more of a rugby type town, yeah, yeah. Um, where, where rugby is or is seen as being very close to the mainstream sport, would probably be a better idea. You never know what deals are being done behind closed doors. I guess uh, only, only the, the bean counters can tell us that they feel that it's uh, an opportunity that came about because they felt that you know Super Rugby could get the revenue from it, but. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel like the, the crowds are reciprocating uh, the, the venue that they've decided to go to. I'll just ask you, I'll leave you with one question about OPEC. And I, look, I so much sport I tried to watch over the weekend. The only bit that I saw was Matatu. Now, they were down by two points with a penalty right out in front that you and me could have spat over with about a minute to go. They had the Black Ferns kicker there, and I don't know whether she was injured or couldn't do it or something. And I was thinking, and we read a great tweet from a mate, Jamie Wall. He said, you're two points behind. You know, the penalty's worth three. You're right out in front. Why the hell wouldn't they kick that penalty, mate? Why? I just don't get it to win the game. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you know, when, when the game there is in the balance and there's an opportunity... Uh, to, to you know to grab it you've got to, you've got to back the, the skill set and and that's 
Yeah, that's the enigma, isn't it? Of being a goal kicker, you know, you live you live mm. for the glory, but you also die by the sword if you if you don't have that success. But you've got to have the ambition and also the confidence to to take opportunities when the game's on the line. And um, you know, I certainly feel that that's that, that's one of those. And yeah, I don't, don't know why that decision was yeah, made. Yeah, well, um, that got away. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you live to regret, don't you? Mm. Big time. How's the golf swing, mate? <laughs> yeah, mate, it, was, uh, it wasn't as good as what we saw from the pros uh, <laughs> uh, the last four days at Millbrook today. But, um, we, we, you know, you know, one of those golf uh, tournaments that you, you well, we, we played today in a, in a format where it was uh, stable fids. And um, I'm always in a team that plays against uh, other teams that have a burglar in it. Well, today we had a burglar in our team off a 28 handicap. And so we finished fourth. Oh, so there you go. God. That's all right, mate. There, there is some justice in the world, buddy. <laughs> there is some justice. <laughs> Great talking to you, dude. We'll talk next week. Thanks, Justin. Always good. Cheers, buddy. See Thanks. Ya. Justin Marshall with us as we're talking Super Rugby. That just about wraps it up, people.